we want to know. But Amy is the executive director of the historic Saranac Lake. She's been in that position since 2009. She's the creator of many new programs there, including the Cure Torch on Wheels. And she and her family are also Saranac Lake locals. Anything else you want to add to that, Amy? Um, uh, no, I don't think so. Thank you for um, sticking around after this amazing show. I kind of thought there might just be like two people. So. <laughs> Um, I appreciate you spending even more time at the theater, and I'm not realizing I have to project when I talk. So hopefully you guys can hear me back there okay. Okay. Um, it's kind of hard to compete with actors, but I'll try. Well, thank you so much, Amy, for joining us this evening to talk a little bit more about our town and the history of Saranac Lake. Um, I have to jump right into the questions, if that's okay with you. So an important part of this play, obviously, is how the stage manager kind of describes the features of Rover's Corners, um, especially since this play is done without much scenery or props. It's very simplistic. Um, so we wanted to ask you, if you were the stage manager of Saranac Lake, what parts of the community would you deem important to share with the audience, or what features define the essence of Saranac Lake? That's a, that's a great question. Yeah, I was going to say, this perfectly leads us into 
to our third <coughs> question, so we'll skip one on that, but beautifully done. <laughs> uh, but I just uh, wanted to talk about these small personal moments and how much it can matter to a small town like Saranac Lake. Um, and residents of this community are connected to one another through like this shared history. So does this play bring to mind any notable stories or local histories that you think really bring people together in this community? Yeah, well, I mean, I think many of you are from here, grew up here, you have those stories. They're stories that you've experienced or who have, that have been passed down to you from, from people in your families. Um, I've, I've only lived here for 25 years, so I'm not a local, um, but I have the luck of working in a, in a museum, so I get to hear all those stories from other people. And those things have just so enriched my life here, and so I feel like my world in Saranac Lake is so full of other people's stories. And I think about them all the time. I often go jogging every year a little slower around Moody Pond. Um, Natalie LaDuke, who you can't be in Pine Ridge Cemetery without thinking about Natalie. She was very much the keeper of Pine Ridge Cemetery history, uh, died not long ago. Um, she used to talk about her ghosts around Moody Pond because if you walk, especially this time of year, you see this mist coming off the pond. She, as a little girl, walked around the pond with Kay Rodell, who's a, a friend, and um, also it has now left this earth. Um, and the two of them, as little girls, would walk around the pond and talk about the ghosts coming off the lake. And so every time I go around the pond, I think of that, and I think of them as, girl, as little girls, and I think about the fact that they're not with us anymore, but maybe they're on that lake now. So, just an example. I feel like um, there are, it, Chassie, who's here, and I, I get to work with her every day at the museum, we know, I think we think of ourselves as knowing people who have never been alive in our moment. Some of those people are the most real to us. So one woman, this is just a random story, but there was a, I don't know if anybody here knows, knew P Pilar Benero? Anybody remember her? She was a, um, a woman from Cuba who came here with her family with tuberculosis and stayed here. And um, she was a very talented pianist. Um, she lived in a little brick house up on French Hill. And uh, she taught piano to everybody in a certain generation. So Karen Smith, you would, you would remember her. You would know people that remember her. Um, she was you in a different time. And um, I have a friend here who comes back every summer, Diane Seidenstein. And Bob Seidenstein is an example of one of these characters who knows all of these stories. Diane is his sister-in-law, and she remembers uh, taking piano classes with Pilar Bonero in her house. And this, this is like a totally random story, sorry, but I'm on the stage. <laughs> um, two summers ago, whenever it was, uh, Pilar Bonero's grandson came back to town. He had never met her. Um, he had never been to Saranac Lake, and he said, and I, he walked in, and I was like, oh my god, Manuel Manero, like, I know you. you know? <laughs> I never had met his grandparents, but to me, they're these living people. And we went to Nori's and sat in Nori's, and I got Diane Seidenstein, who was in Florida, on my cell phone. And she, in that moment, talked to her, to, to this man, about his granddaughter, his grandmother, who he'd never met before. And described the house that they that she went to and uh, the piano lessons that she had. And so, anyway, one of those stories that um, in, for me enriches my life, and uh, I think it makes me very lucky to work in a museum. Actors are so lucky to work in theater. I mean, I think arts and culture is a way that we can get uh, past, get to what matters, and uh, we're, we're we're lucky to be in, in this this line of work. <laughs> Uh, we're going to open up to audience questions in just a few seconds, but before we do, we just want to touch on really quick, obviously an important part of our production is our partnership with Pine Ridge Cemetery. We were glad the weather was nice tonight and we got to experience Act 3, act three out there all together. Um, but obviously that cemetery plays a huge role in Saranac Lake's history and it's a very important part of this community. And we just wondered if you would share a little bit more with our audiences the history of Pine Ridge Cemetery and what it means to this community. Yeah, so, well, there's, you know, it's, it's a uh, huge cemetery. We were in the oldest part there. Um, 
Uh, a lot of the stones now look rather new because my friend Gary, um, Gary, Gary, Baldwin has been cleaning those headstones and he's retired <coughs> as a teacher. Um, there's so many stories in the graveyard and we do tours um, often and um, you know, please uh, come along when you, when you see a tour that's gonna be happening. There's the story of the Norwegian sailors who were in Saranac Lake during World War II. Some of them are buried there. That was one of Natalie's favorite spots that she took care of. There's a Jewish cemetery over in the other side um, with some beautiful headstones and um, stories that you can learn about there. There's a memorial to a family that lost how many people to the Holocaust? Uh, it's, it's, it's a very moving memorial. And we always take um, the fifth grade students every year to the cemetery. Um, and they, they, uh, that's an important place for them. Lots of doctors that, that practice medicine in Saranac Lake. Um, they have their own important place. Um, and a lot of people that we don't know that we maybe, you know, there, there's a lot of um, unmarked graves. We know that. A lot of people that um, have their stories have been lost. And that's just an important thing, I think, to think about as we walk through the cemetery, too. So I think there's a, well, there's a line in the play that even memory is lost, right? And so um, that's a humbling thing as a place that our job is to remember. Um, it's something to keep in mind that maybe there's something even more important than memory. Um, I, one of my favorite books is another book by Thornton Wilder called The Bridge Over San Luis Rey. It takes place in Lima, Peru. And there's a line at the end that says, excuse me, <laughs> I thought I would have a chance to read this to you. Uh, my grandfather gave me this book, and I think about it all the time when somebody dies. Um, we ourselves shall be loved for a while and forgotten, but the love will have been enough. All those impulses of love return to the love that made them. Even memory is not necessary for love. There is a land of the living and a land of the dead, and the only bridge is love, the only survival, the only meaning. And so in the play, here, there's this question, what matters, right? Like, what, what is left? And it's interesting to me that it's answered so overtly in that line from another book, what's left is love, is what's left between people. Even when it's lost, it moves on to other people. Beautiful, thanks for sharing that. Thank you. Uh, does anyone in the audience have any questions for Amy while we're all here together? Don't be shy. <laughs> might be a big question, but I guess what's the biggest lesson you've learned from your job and being here and learning about all of these people's lives? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's a big question, but you have the right to ask that question because of who you are in the graveyard. Um, I would say, I guess, I don't know if it's the biggest lesson, but it's, um, an appreciation for people of all ages. So um, <coughs> I don't, I think I, I now appreciate more people who are very elderly and I appreciate people who aren't even alive anymore and maybe I've never met. So it's sort of an appreciation for um, humans across time. And that's not some like deep thing that only I get. <laughs> I think if you work in a museum, it's just, you know, we spend a lot of time reading journals from people who died, you know, a uh, hundred years ago. And, and what you see is this uh, common humanity, which is a lucky thing to be able to see every day. Any other questions? Can we read those journals in the museum? Chessie. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I don't know if we can answer the question, but hi, I'm Chessie. <laughs> Um, I'm the archivist and curator of the museum with Amy. Um, yes, you, you can. You have to make an appointment because everything's stored away and we have to get it out for you. But um, we do have an online collections database that literally grows every day. I just put 20 stereo view cards up there today. Um, and with major plug for it, our expansion into Dr. Trudeau's home and office next door to the museum, we will actually have a public reading room for the first time um, that gives us the space where we can spread out and research and explore. Um, so if you, you know, have a particular topic you want to know more about or, uh, you know, you want to learn about your house or maybe you just want to see a postcard written by a TV station, um, you know, you can give me a shout. Thank you.